The Lord Jesus has so many beautiful titles in the Word of God. Uh, some of those who come right towards the end of our Bible are a series of couplets that are all-inclusive, much as we would say from A to Z or from soup to nuts, whatever that means. And so in Revelation 22, 13, the Lord says, I am Alpha and Omega, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He is the Alpha and the Omega of all of God's revelation. You go into a library, like the Library of Congress, and there are untold numbers of books, hundreds of thousands of books, and they're simply the recombination of the 26 letters of the, of the English alphabet. And uh, so in this statement, the Lord is saying, everything I want to say to the world, I'm saying it in my son. He is the full and final revelation of all truth. But not only so, he's the beginning and the end. In other words, he was there in the planning of all of God's purposes. And he will be there as the crowning glory of history, as the, as the moment in the climax of history. When every knee bows, every tongue confesses, God, you pick the right man for the job, you win. Jesus deserves the highest place. He's also the first and the last. From the first breath that went into Adam, the first human being, to the last breath of the Holy Spirit, quickening a soul into eternal life. The Lord Jesus has been behind it all. He has been the one who has been doing the work of God, superintending God's plan, and is able to say, I have finished the work which you gave me to do. What a day that will be. He will look on the travail of his soul and be satisfied. A job well done. Well, here's a little story that, uh, in a strange way, illustrates this idea. The Civil War had a whole series of firsts, as you probably know if you've studied it at all. The first use of a, the Gatling gun and um, landmines and repeating rifles. Uh, the first time they had um, ironclads, iron-covered ships that were involved in in warfare, submarines, torpedoes, um, aerial reconnaissance, um, and <laughs> uh, the, the first uh, the first time they had income tax and um, the draft was during the American Civil War. The first battle that was fought was fought at Manassas in Virginia, and uh, it was a very bloody battle uh, known as the Battle of Bull Run. And uh, there was a man, his name was um, Wilmer McLean. He had a plantation uh, nearby the battlefield. And in actual fact, um, there were shells that pierced his home, went right through his kitchen. And he thought that was a bit close for comfort. And so he sold that home and he moved to a little unnoticed village, really, a little town he thought they would stay well out of the way of the armies that were fighting. And he uh, moved his family there. But in actual fact, in 1865, Robert E. Lee, who was exhausted, his troops were exhausted, uh, decided that it was time to surrender. They chose for the place of surrender this little village called Appomattox Courthouse. And in actual fact, chose this man, Wilmer McLean's drawing room as the place where the armistice would be signed. He called himself the Alpha and the Omega of the war. He was there when the first shot came right through the wall of his house into his kitchen. He was there when uh, they put pen to paper and signed the uh, armistice between the North and the South in his living room. But uh, far greater than this, our blessed Lord scans all of history 
He's there from the beginning to the end. He is the beginning and the end. And uh, of course, all the way through, it's not simply a matter of saying he's there at the beginning and end, but he's there all the way through. And this is a huge encouragement to God's people when we underline this in our hearts. In all the circumstances of life, all the crises, all the problems that the Lord Jesus has seen in the thousands of years of human history, he's always been there. He's always present, a very present help. So whatever you're going through today, listen to the words of the Lord Jesus. These are titles he claims for himself. I am the Alpha and the Omega. Whatever you need to hear from God, Jesus will be God's central message. He will be the subject matter of everything God says to us. In him are all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And as far as the planning is concerned, as far as the will of God is concerned, the Lord Jesus is the beginning and the end. He is the first cause, and he is the prime mover, and he is the grand conclusion of everything that God is doing. And of course, as the first and the last, he is the one who not only communicated God's truth to the world, and not only planned with his father the grand scheme of history, but he's the one who actually rolled up his sleeves and went to work. My father works hitherto, and I work, he said. And the Lord Jesus will not quit until he's got the job done. The beautiful words of Naomi regarding Boaz, the kinsman redeemer, the man will not rest until he's finished the work. And that's the hope, the certain hope of every believer, where our lives sometimes seem to be tangled and uh, an unfinished, a lot of unfinished business, things that we wish we had accomplished and we didn't get them done in time and we feel they're, they're somehow not finished. But the scripture says he will finish the work. He will accomplish all of God's purposes. And so we can rest in that. And uh, uh, dear uh, Wilmer McLean seemed to not be able to avoid the Civil War wherever he moved. And, you know, we can't avoid it either. We can't avoid the civil war that's going on in the universe. You might as well try to hide up the muzzle of a gun. We are the battlefield. But Christ has triumphed gloriously, and he is winning, right? We are always led in triumph through the Lord Jesus. So take these three titles as a comfort to your own heart. What he begins, he will finish. What he has promised, he will fulfill. What he has purposed, he will accomplish.